is the Nutramedical Report with Dr. Bill Deagle and myself, uh, Tim Alexander, the Scottish American Earl Sterling. Uh, Dr. Bill will be right back in just a second. I think I hear him coming right now. <laughs> Dr. Bill, are you there? I am indeed. Yeah, we started without you. That's okay. Uh, uh, I, as, as with a three-hour show, you're off and running against the deadlines of all kinds. <laughs> Okay, um, I, I, uh, what I was about to say when I heard you coming back is uh, some of the really important news today. Uh, yesterday it came out that uh, we had retasked a aircraft carrier, uh, the USS John S. Stennis, to return to the Persian Gulf uh, in August, and uh, that would give us three supercarriers in the Gulf or are immediately uh, in that area. Uh, but now it's come out today that we are rushing another supercarrier battle group. Um, so we that uh, will be the uh, USS uh, Dwight Eisenhower. Wow. Uh, the Enterprise and the Abraham Lincoln battle groups are already there. So we're looking at four supercarrier battle groups. Plus, the French have their nuclear carrier, the Charles de Gaulle, uh, scheduled to arrive shortly with its uh, much smaller battle fleet. Uh, the battle fleets, by the way, around our supercarriers um, are always uh, generally four to five guided missile cruisers and destroyers uh, with the Aegis air defense system. Um, additionally, sometimes they throw in uh, one or two guided missile frigates. There's usually one or two support uh, ships. And uh, additionally, there's one, sometimes two, uh, nuclear-powered hunter-killer submarines that operate in uh, conjunction with the battle groups. So you're not just talking about four super carriers. You're talking about three, I'm sorry, four large uh, battle groups, uh, in addition to all the other ships that we already routinely have in the Gulf and the Gulf area. Uh, and then in addition to that, we have uh, usually one to four assault carriers with uh, slightly smaller battle groups around them. Those are uh, ships that can launch uh, U.S. Marines amphibious craft. They can launch the Harrier jump jets that the Marine Corps flies, as well as uh, they carry, tend to carry a large number of assault uh, troop transport helicopters and some Super Cobra uh, Marine Corps attack helicopters. Now, in addition to that, uh, you can count on the fact that we'll have at least one, if not two, super carriers in the Mediterranean. Um, and, of course, the, the Russians are sending in a dozen warships, uh, many with uh, uh, their equivalent of our Marine Corps, their naval infantry. Uh, two of their best destroyers, which are giant uh, air defense umbrellas, and uh, additional ones. And we don't know how many others are in the additional uh, contingent that's going. So there's a, and of course we've we've flushed a number of NATO uh, frigates, uh, guided missile frigates, into that area near Syria. Uh, what you're going to see very shortly yet this summer. Uh, half or over half of all the nuclear carriers on Earth will be in what I call the war zone, which will be the Middle East, uh, off of Syria and off of Iran. And uh, the firepower is enormous. And uh, we're, we're moving towards war. Um, it could happen sooner than later. It may be October. A lot of a lot of things point to October, but quite frankly, the way things are going, uh, anything can happen. Um, so we're we're going down a road that's not very good. Now, the United States government, uh, the, the Pentagon just announced uh, within the last couple of days its concern over the improving quality of Iranian missiles, in particular their terminal guidance systems and submunitions. And this opens up um, something I want to talk about um, because, well, 
I used to be, I've been a consultant to several aerospace firms. There was a firm in Long Beach that uh, was one of the best aerospace design bureaus America's ever had. Naturally, the Pentagon didn't fund most of their research, um, but uh, I was uh, a senior consultant to them. And on one of my trips out to Long Beach, uh, the uh, my buddy, the, the CEO, Chairman of uh, Bill, the late Bill Moody, myself, and one of Israel's top generals went out for lunch. And uh, we went to a, Bill's favorite air, airport uh, restaurant uh, near the big Long Beach airport. Um, single story, flat, very large. And uh, the three of us, we were talking about Saddam Hussein was still in power. The first Gulf War hadn't happened. It was a couple years away, maybe a year and a half away. And we were talking about the dangers to Israel from his Scud-type fleet. Now, we always said Scud during the war, but really they were all Hussein missiles. They were an Iraqi modified manufactured variant of the, the Scud. They made it, the fuselage a little bit longer. Um, and he said, you know, our Air Force, your Air Force, we can track them down, we can get them. I said, no, you can't. I said, you may be able to knock out a, a one or two, but I said, you're not going to be able to uh, take out his scud launchers. And uh, I said, you want proof? I said, look around you. How many scuds and cruise missiles do you think you could park in this restaurant? And I said, you can make the walls so they slide open or fall down, pre-survey the launch points. I said, uh, put a little lead in the roof so the most advanced radar penetrating satellites can't see what's inside. He kinda, his eyes got kind of big at that point. And I said, you can roll them out and launch them in five minutes. And I said, if they're smart, and uh, they'll hide these things, and there's no way on earth you're going to find them. Well, I think we took out a couple. Uh, during the first Gulf War. Basically, uh, their hiding wasn't even all that terribly sophisticated, but it worked. And we couldn't take out uh, his scud launchers on the ground. Um, now, what I said to the general, uh, that really scared him, and I, I often have wondered if this played a part in the drive to go after Saddam. Sometimes you have to be careful what you say. I said, if he's smart with his missiles, he'll use fuel air explosive uh, weapons instead of normal dumb bombs, uh, high explosive, and he'll use submunitions, and he'll use a grid system and patter pattern fire them, and he can take out uh, a large part of the city, uh, and if he lays down uh, submunitions over a grid system, uh, he can get PSI uh, readings, pounds per square inch blast effect readings that uh, will exceed standard NATO tactical nuclear warheads. And this was a pretty tough general. <laughs> But I could tell it, it really made a big impact. Well, essentially what the Pentagon now is talking about is Iran has developed this type of capability. They have submunitions, and their terminal guidance is now quite good. Uh, we think that maybe there's 150,000 uh, guided missiles and rockets in the Middle East aimed at Israel and American allied forces in the area. But here's the thing. If they're smart, uh, they will have b developed a capability of manufacturing and distributing uh, their missiles without us being able to observe. In other words, the number of total number of missiles they have may be several fold more than what we think. Instead of 150, it could be 300, it could be 400,000. These things, once you get the, the guidance system set up, they, they, they can be mass produced. They're less sophisticated than a car in many ways. Yeah, exactly. Yeah, people need to understand that the elements of war that are being present make it very, very likely that something will go wrong and this will become not just a regional conflict, but a global conflict. Absolutely. Now, what does this mean? It means that we have an impending Middle Eastern war that can become a global
What if Americans could have A, better health, B, a lower incidence of cancer, and C, a lower occurrence of fibrocystic disease of the breast, all from simply consuming more iodine? Nutridyne Iodine from Dr. Bill Deagle's Nutramedical.com is the answer. The toxicity of modern life is adversely impacting iodine levels. For example, Americans who are more exposed to fluoride than other populations have a desperate need for more iodine. Edgar Casey's Diatomic Iodine, known as Nutridyne from Nutramedical.com, is a universal pathogen killer that helps regenerate cellular energy. If you suffer from low thyroid, chronic fatigue, mitochondria function, or to just feel better, then take a few drops of Nutridyne every day. Order Nutridyne at Nutramedical.com or call 888-212-8871. That's 888-212-8871. Or go to Nutramedical.com, spelled N-U-T-R-I medical.com. Nutramedical.com, bringing nutrition and medicine together. Hi, this is Steve Spillum for Midas Resources. In 1971, President Nixon took the United States off the gold standard and put us into a fiat currency. This allowed Congress and the Federal Reserve to create trillions of dollars out of thin air. The national debt has risen to incredible heights and your hard-earned dollars by a small fraction of what they once did. The average life expectancy for a fiat currency is 27 years. The dollar is failing and on borrowed time. When currencies fall, people turn to gold and silver because gold and silver have been real money for more than 5,000 years. It is our mission at Midas resources to help you preserve your capital. Don't let your personal savings shrink to nothing. For important free information on how you can protect your personal wealth, contact me, Steve Spillum, at 1-800-686-2237, extension 308. Call today while we are still accepting dollars for gold and silver. 1-800-686-2237, extension 308. Make a change in your financial security today. That's 1-800-686-2237, extension 308. So you don't want to carry a gun, but you do want to ensure your personal safety. Then empower yourself legally with self-defense products from StunGunMikes.com. Stun guns come in more shapes than just what you see on TV. Now you can get a powerful mini stun gun that fits in the palm of your hand, a stun baton, or a cell phone or lipstick stun gun. StunGunMikes.com also carries real spy gear like bug and metal detectors and discreet car and home security cameras that hide in almost any type of everyday object, from alarm clocks to pens. Now you can see how your babysitter really treats your children. Go to StunGunMikes.com, spelled just like it sounds. StunGunMikes.com Buy real spy gear from StunGunMikes.com just like the exact same spy gear sold to the government, military, corporate security, law enforcement, and private detectives. Empower yourself with self-defense products now from StunGunMikes.com All whey protein powders are not created equal. Fresh liquid whey has been used for hundreds of years to restore health to the sick and youth to the aging. Why is it that no one reports these benefits from today's whey protein powders? It is because they are all processed with heat or chemicals which damages them, making them a burden for your body and making it more likely to cause allergies. One World Whey's True Cool process retains all the powerful properties of fresh raw whey in a concentrated powder. One World Whey is speeding up the body's ability to get healthy and it is replacing the need for many other supplements. To learn how One World Way may help you with fat loss, the elimination of inflammation and pain, detoxification of heavy metals, intestinal health, brain function, and increases in strength, energy, and muscle size, call 888-988-3325. Mention coupon code KNOCKOUT and you'll receive a free tube of knockout pain cream with your order, which eliminates soft tissue pain in 10 minutes for 90% of users. Call 888-988-3325 or visit OneWorldWay.com. That's OneWorld, W-H-E-Y.com. Are you tired of searching for great talk radio? Something more important. Search no more. We are the GCN Radio Network. Welcome back. And uh, Tim, you put up, I, I looked at the amount of news you put up yesterday. It's like immense. You have done some serious work here lately. I have a feeling that you realize the pace of things are increasing. You mentioned today that you were going to launch the fourth major nurse service years ago when your wife got sick, and you might decide to do that again. There's always preserved time to be on our show, too, because I think you've, you're gaining your audience worldwide on your blog, europebusiness.blogspot.com, 
And uh, your analysis is uh, very different than a lot of other people. Uh, They look at it and kind of try to to jade it to say, no, no, things really can't be that bad. And you look at it almost from the military uh, point of view of uh, this is the hardware, this is the assembly, this is the technology, this is the tactics, this is the supply lines and logistics. Uh, They're going to war. This is not like a, a, a this is not like a warm up. This is the real thing. We're we're probably going to have some level of destruction before any quote peace treaty breaks out, uh, and the level of destruction might be a heck of a lot more than what people are have a stomach for. Yeah, uh, essentially, if if they use a large number of launchers and uh, uh, well fragmentating, uh, what when you fragment your your warhead into sub munitions, um, a good way to do it is to do it as early in the boost phase as you can. Uh, that way, the warhead um, is almost impossible to destroy with an anti-missile missile system like the Israelis have. In other words, instead of one big, dumb, high-explosive warhead coming in that weighs two tons, you might have uh, 30 or 50 pure air explosive submunition bombs, and they're spread out, uh, terminally guided, uh, at least at some point, and then they're spread out. And you, you can't hit them all. There's no way, shape, or form. And um, then when, if you launch a large number of these uh, and you saturate a grid, which can be a city or a major military base, and, I mean, uh, you know, it's not just Israel. It's also Saudi Arabia, Qatar, Kuwait. Um, uh, you can take out literally many, many cities uh, in the Middle East and large military bases without using nuclear warheads, without crossing the nuclear threshold, without even necessarily using chemical or, or biological or radiological warheads. Uh, just the pure raw explosive force. A, a, a FAE, a pure air explosive warhead, is three to four times as powerful as, as a, a regular warhead. It doesn't carry the oxidizer. Air is the oxidizer. In different ways to make it, but basically it's gasoline. Okay. Right. And you know what's more dangerous: a five-gallon can of gasoline full, or a five-gallon can of gasoline with just a tiny bit of gas left in the bottom. The rest is just empty. Well, I used to be a chief fire inspector for a volunteer fire department, and I can tell you, it's the almost empty one that's the more most dangerous because there is a fuel, air, explosive potentially very explosive mixture there. Uh, the automobile engine runs off of a fuel air explosion. That's when you atomize a minute amount of gasoline into the carburetor. You apply a spark, boom, you drive the piston, and you do that many, many times per minute. That's what an internal combustion engine is. Well, what we learned in Afghanistan and so forth, the Russians and the Americans, you lay a brew, as they call it, a, a fuel air explosive brew over an area. It could be powder, aluminum, different things, but gas is uh, gasoline uh, uh, vaporizes quite well. And then you apply a spark. And literally, if you happen to be standing nearby, um, you you may experience the rather unpleasant sensation of your lungs being pulled out of your mouth, wow. which tends to ruin your whole day. Uh, and then, of course, the, the blast explosion, which is quite horrific. Uh, But literally, instead of a bomb the size, say, of a car, you have a bomb the size of several blocks. And that's what a FAE is properly dispersed. So when they are, are, are when the Pentagon now says that the Iran, or the Iranians have have made great improvements in both terminal guidance on their missiles and also submunitions, this is what they're talking. Or one of the things they're talking about. There's other things you can get it, but this is one of the the, the most dangerous. And it means that Iran has a conventional, very powerful, very effective, mad, mutually assured destruction counterforce against Israel and NATO and Saudi Arabia and so forth in that area, one that doesn't even require them to use chemical, biological, radiological, or much less nuclear warheads, uh, dead is still dead. And, and you know, 
kiss the economy, keep it simple, stupid. Uh, we often get so involved with our high-tech uh, weaponry. Oh, well, our weapons are ten times better than yours. Okay, but you can still kill me. Uh, I can kill you ten times every time you kill me. Who wins that battle? Because you're both dead, you see. And, and the, the Iranians have thought outside of the box and we don't really know that they have 150,000 warheads uh, and missiles. They, they in Syria and Hezbollah, who they've supplied, they may, in fact, have two, three, four, five times that number. Because once you get the guidance system, and they're manufacturing this stuff themselves, the chips and everything, once you get that all set up, then essentially you're talking about a tube and the the ordnance that fires the tube, and it, they're all solid now. They don't go to the, the, the liquid fuel. Is, it takes too long and gives a signature when they're fueling it. So, you know, what, they're, they're very prone to be mass-produced. And if you hide what you're doing and hide the distribution of them, then we don't really know what they've got. It could be a lot worse. And you have all these people that are like Hillary Clinton uh, that are rushing into war in the Middle East. Yeah. Hillary well, Clinton is, uh, doesn't have any uh, common sense in this matter at all, does she? Well, I think she's. I think she's. She's evil. I mean, uh, she may be the harlot of. of um, uh, I, 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 I like to change Bible her name to, of, I mean. to, to. Yeah, I'd like to call her Lilith. How's that? Would that be a good name? <laughs> the, the wife of Satan himself. I mean, uh, you know, this is this is really really she over the top. I mean, rushing in the military, making a, a very bold and what they call exaggerated statements. First off, if we do an attack, a full force attack, and now here's the latest, and I want you to respond on this. The latest is that NATO and the United Nations are pushing to get a UN Charter Number Seven uh, under UN Charter Number Seven that allows them to make, not only make economic sanctions, which is an act of war against Syria and Iran, which has already happened that we've done, started in July 1st when they cut off the oil distribution back to Europe, but also military incursions. And the Russians have stated, if you do this. It's an act of war. We're going to actually attack you, which means missiles may be coming in on cities like Constantinople or uh, Europe. Europe may actually be attacked. People think Europe can't be attacked. Well, let me tell you, Germany and so on, don't feel too uh, smart because the missiles from, uh, from Pakistan, the missiles from Iran can strike Europe. Yes. Yes, they can. They, they can strike Europe, and, and uh, so don't think, oh, they can't hit us because we've got our, our NATO military, and they're not going to get our soil, so we'll just send in the forces to those pesky Middle Easterners. No, no, this is now coming to a time when they can strike you with long-range missiles, and you can't defend against all of the missiles. You might stop some because they have put some of the Bush missile defense in there, but it's very leaky. It's a very leaky umbrella indeed. You can always overcome an anti-missile system. Exactly. Back in a moment, we want to hear your response. But it wasn't because I didn't know enough. Welcome back, and uh, I want to open up uh, the can of worms of the call the, uh, the of the election. I call it the selection. Here's an article in the Washington Post. Did Romney back a law to ban all abortions? It depicts Republican challenger Mitt Romney as a candidate who opposes abortion without exception. This is a familiar territory for presumptive GOP nominee who has weathered plenty of abortion-related attacks in the past. Well, let's see uh, him bring in a pro-life vice president, maybe uh, uh, Michelle Bachman or Sarah Palin. Uh, let's see him uh, put Mr. Santorum as the Attorney General and get rid of this idiot that's the attorney, current Attorney General, uh, you know, criminal in, in the, that's literally trying to cover up Fast and Furious. Uh, right now, whoever's listening out there needs to start getting an, an act together and realize Obamacare, and I posted up more videos because I've had a, some very nasty comments made about how dare you inflame. I even had a, a, a worker for one of the congressmen actually contact my office and say that they threatened us, saying how dare we cause mass hysteria that they're, quote, putting a chip in children when they're born after uh, Obamacare is instituted for those that are, quote, involved in the plan. Yes, it's there. You may not want to believe it, and it may be such a state of shock, but you know what you need to do a skill called reading. That bill, as, as, uh, 
as uh, the head of the Senate said, well, you have to read it. You pass it first, and then you can read what's in it. Remember that comment? <laughs> that, that was that comment. <laughs> well, when you have bills that are written by probably 50 or more lawyers, and, and if you've ever written, I mean, I've I had friends that are lawyers, and, I, I, you know, they, they, they pride themselves in their gobbledygook and their boilerplate. And uh, one guy, I, I knew he would collect them uh, because generally uh, lawyers don't copyright their work. And if he found something particularly contrived and involved and, and, and really good, well, he would save it. And he would uh, use it or parts of it uh, himself. Yeah. And he, over the decades, he's built up quite a collection. But yeah. so you have all these attorneys writing these bills. Right. And a um, uh, thousand pages. Uh, 500 pages, and mostly it's legal boilerplate. Well, if you've ever read a, a simple, say, a, a real estate contract that's three or four pages, it's not a novel. I mean, you have to read every sentence carefully, and you have to reread the thing several times, and it may contradict itself and, and, and all kind of stuff. Now, when you're dealing with a thousand pages, and, and then you have to understand, well, what does this term mean? Because often they use terms that are particularly vague, but uh, it, 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 you know, it, it gives them enough room to drive a Mack truck through a, a loophole. So, so the right. term may be kind of vague, but it may include the right to use RFID chips. Well, and, yeah, the fact know, is, it's, it's there, though. I, I mean, and people need to understand that the the the, uh, the Food and Drug Administration's approved the RFID chip for implantation. It's in the Obama Act. You can actually read it and read the deadlines when they expect implementation. That's there. Whether they actually are able to do it, I mean, most people, once they actually wake up and realize, like, this is not a damn conspiracy theory. It's damn well in there. They think it's just as safe. And by the way, the FDA said, even though that we found animals where they've proven these chips cause cancer, the FDA, as usual, just like with aspartame, has said, there's no effect, no problem, da da da. Right, aspartame okay. is rat poison, and RFID chips do cause cancer because they sit on your skin and radiate. Well, not only that, they don't only get radiation, they also leak a form of toxins that cause cancer locally. We know that where the tumor actually is there. Now, I want to go into some of this other stuff about. Uh, about Romney, because Romney's condemning uh, Venezuela, Hugo Chavez. Now, the Chavez is not our, 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 our friend. Chavez and the Russians and Chinese are not our friends. They plan on eventually the Chinese on invading Australia, New Zealand, and America. Now, right now, they'd like to just buy it out as much as possible and do industrial espionage to the tune of $200 billion per month. Uh, industrial espionage against America. They want our entire airline industry from from Boeing Aerospace can't do business in China unless they pass over their intellectual property as as do all other companies. And Obama, this well, they, they bought the uh, uh, Cirrus, the 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 uh, most high tech manufacturer of of light planes. It's now owned by by a Chinese company. Yeah. Uh, I mean, and it's the best. Uh, a buddy of mine has a Cirrus, and and it's it's the best plane out there for a little single engine, four passenger plane. But it's owned by China now. Yeah. And it was American technology. We gave them all this money. We gave them our factories. Uh, this is a, a globalist plan. This is the global banking cartel families. They are determined to destroy North America and Europe. And our U.S. of A. is the number one target, and the rest of of, of uh, the European nations uh, throw in Australia, and New Zealand, and Japan for good measure. Uh, they're they're second, but they intend to destroy us all. And it's you know they've shipped fifty thousand major factories out of the United States in the last handful of years. Well, look at the comments by uh, by Eisenhower, who said if you have your military base of manufacturing moved to a foreign place, you have no ability to protect yourself. Uh, exactly. Most of the so three quarters and of the chips. Gone. We talked about this. Two, most of it's two, gone. Yeah, three years ago we talked about this, where we had talked about the daisy chain of chips that are manufactured in Taiwan or in China, in Beijing, or, or Shenzhen, and these other chip manufacturing plants that have been moved to China. And so they can the put chips. in code that can disable that chip. Right. If they, they want, do the if you're the manufacturer, there's all kind of 
Little it's called scalar, you can do. It's, it's called scalar code, code that is actuated by scalar radiation of specific uh, carrier frequencies that can shut the chip off, turn off the generators in your in your carrier group, stop your Orlicon anti-missile defense systems, turn off all kinds of things, stabilizer platforms for your aircraft carrier. Uh, people say, oh, no, that can't happen. Yes, it can. And of course again, you can. How, how idiotic is it to actually have, and we, we had this story brought out three years ago, actually around uh, the 4th of July, three years ago, and people say, oh, that's not true. I said, it absolutely is true. Just like the chip, uh, the RFID chip is part of Romneycare, uh, Obamacare, and Romney wants to get rid of it. Now, here's where Romney is, is correct. Romney's seen already what, what Romney care has done to Massachusetts. They wanted to, to have a plan. And by the way, both parties, the Republicans and the Democrats, had this idea of, quote, a mandate. Uh, you don't have a mandate and start talking about buying insurance. First off, it was written by the insurance carriers. You simply do something like uh, raise health tax. Wrote it, but it was passed initially in the Senate, and the U.S. Supreme Court has ruled that it's a tax. All, right. The U.S. Constitution says all money bills, all tax bills, have to first pass the House of Representatives. Not maybe, not kind of, not maybe, not somehow, not, you know, there are exceptions. Have to. Right. So now, how the hell is it law? Right. Well, secondly, the thing is, if they wanted to make uh, health care reasonable, what they should have done, and I've mentioned this before, is simply allow health tax, put the money back to the, lo- to the local county. The money would go back to the counties, not the state. The county would then work together with other counties and say, we need a regional thing for trauma centers, MRI scans, whatever. We need so many radiologists, primary doctors, etc. Put out those notices for jobs. Pay them an hourly wage. Let the doctors then decide who's going to be hired. The local authority would pay the, the wages for those people. We would get rid of insurance. We would get rid of big government. We would oh, have total you would get rid of insurance. You would get rid of big government, and you would put a big den in big pharma. And see, right. that's the problem is... The people writing these bills and passing them aren't working for us. Well, they're 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 working for big pharma, pharma, big insurance. Right. Well, here's what would happen. Even our Association of Physicians and Surgeons, actually, that's Dr. Rand Paul, Dr. Ron Paul, our organization I belong to for 20 years, put up a hospital on the Canadian border and had struck down by the federal government uh, there because they at Health and Human Services because they didn't want us being able to offer services at 30 percent, 30 percent of the cost of regular health care. 30%. 30%. And people could set up time payment, too. So it was set up in such a way that people wouldn't go bankrupt. Do you know that 68% of the people in America that go bankrupt now? 68% because of health issues. And, and the rest most of them, of them have insurance. Yeah, most of those have insurance, by the way. Because it, it's in. so outrageous. It's They charge so much more than what then your insurance will cover that at the end of the day you still have to go bankrupt well if you had a uh, if you were a month in the intensive care unit with advanced care oh, you could easily you blow better half, be a rocker cover yeah you can blow half a million dollars and if you spend six months in there you and all your relatives are in debt for three generations so you are forced into bankruptcy and then also that it hurts the hospitals because they have to write it off or anybody else buying insurance they have to pay for it Welcome back, and of course, one of the key issues in this election is Obama's going to have quite a time trying to attack uh, Romney. It's going to be kind of uh, like trying to grab a bar of soap in the middle of a very <laughs> steamy shower, uh, being thrown around by half a dozen guys carrying on. Firstly, Romney hasn't done himself any favors when it comes to his stance on abortion. I'm reading the Huffington Post article, which I posted at the top today, and I want to get your analysis because Romney is his own worst enemy. In fact, he's making a kind of an art form of failing at this election. From what I can see, he went from a one-point lead literally after the Supreme Court decision under Roberts, which is criminal on the part of Roberts, to a five- to six-point lead now. Romney hasn't done it himself. And he says, fact-checker Michael Dobbs produced the definite list of flip-flops back in 2007. And, of course, in 2002, Romney uh, said he wanted to maintain the, the abortion status quo. He even, uh, even though he promised during this, uh, mid, midway in this, that he was pro-life during his term, in between 2008 and 2012 uh, presidential campaigns, Romney repeatedly said he was unapologetically pro-life and believed that abortion should be limited only to instances of rape, incest, or to save the life of the mother, which is, of course, all, all of that is crap. The baby's a baby, no matter what. It doesn't change because it's wanted or not wanted or how it was conceived. So how does Obama campaign against Romney and a law that outlaws abortion? The answer is he didn't. 
He couldn't have because no such law exists. And so uh, if Romney tries to say that he actually tried to stop it uh, with all his political career, he's done nothing. Uh, well, former uh, Attorney yeah. General Ed Mitchell, who was uh, Nixon's Attorney General, he made a comment that I think should be chiseled in stone above the interest to, to Congress and the White House. And what he said was, don't judge us by what we say, judge us by what we do. Right. Well, and I, I if think that you apply very appropriate. that to most politicians, you would probably be headed to the local, uh, you know, Lowe's or something to buy a bunch of rope, <laughs> because they all need to be strung up, in my opinion. Uh, the, the, we have some of the most vile people uh, imaginable. Uh, but here, here, here's my analysis of, uh, of the presidential race. You have got, at a time of a global depression with everything looking like it's going to collapse all the more, uh, depending on which figure you want to quote, somewhere between 87 and 100 million Americans of working age without jobs. Um, you have got a big bucks, a money junkie who keeps his money offshore, uh, who in one of his big palaces is putting in an elevator for his cars in his multi-level uh, underground parking, uh, who outsourced jobs, who laid off people, who's done it all at a time when that is kind of universally hated by the average person in America. Uh, who's slicker than, uh, well, I, I can't say that on there, but he, he's very slick, let's put it that way. Uh, and, uh, well, I, my, my, my late father used to say, slicker than a, and I have to clean it up, uh, a outhouse rat. Okay. Um, and then um, you have Obama, who lied, 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 lied. Oh, and he lied some more. And uh, who has helped to take us from the bad times of George Bush into far worse times. And, and now he wants to lie his way out. So, you know, you, you've got these two jokers that uh, are pathetic. But here's their, here's their big advantage. Uh, most of the country uses computers for voting and computers for counting. And if you think that computers are a safe, secure way to vote, Vote and to count your vote, I have a bridge in Brooklyn that I can make you one heck of a yeah, deal yeah. on. Well, you know the George Soros bought into major stock into the vote counting uh, machines. Of course. Uh, yeah. So Soros just recently, in the last six he, months, bought he, and, and that scummy, satanic individual is a key operative for the Rothschilds globally. Right. I mean, when you're, you're, you go back to dealing with a the small, same group of uh, small people, and they're satanic. They're evil. Their God is money. They're leading us to the Third World War and the greatest economic chaos in human history. And, and purposely. Well, you know, the problem I find it worse, though, than these people, you know what's worse? What do you think is worse? <sighs> what's worse God, is they, actually they, they, when they I get calls or emails <laughs> or I confront people face to face and they look at me with such derision and anger, they'd like to spit on me or take a punch. And I look at them like, don't you realize the reason why I do this, why I'm doing my show, why I reveal these truths, is because I'm one of the few people that has enough guts to actually tell the truth. People don't tell the truth, as they say, to tell the truth in times such as these is a radical thing. It's a radical thing to tell the truth in this day and age, isn't it? Well, yes, it is, but guess and I'm what? More, I mean, I'm more, uh, when I, I, uh, all I'm more hell disgusted. breaks out and WW3 starts, some people are going to be pretty shocked. Oh, well, well, too late, well, too how late. How did this happen? How did, it, how did it happen that, for example, here's a timeline that I expect to, to transpire. And again, it's not written in stone and it's not prophetic, so don't kind of nail me down to that. But this is where I see us going. Number one, at the current rate we're going, Obama's going to get reelected. I know it's in the prophecies that you've read in the, the, the Bible, and it's possible that Romney would get elected if he does the following. Number one, continues to recapitulate over the fact that he screwed up and admits he screwed up, not, not uh, stopping abortion when he was the, the uh, governor of Massachusetts and passing uh, Romney care. And number two, he actually uh, apologizes to even conservative uh, Mormons who wouldn't do abortion because if you do an abortion, I took care of Mormons back in the early 80s, do you get an abortion, you have to refer to the Council of the 70, you have some fairly serious reasons why you have to have it. And it has to go right through the Council of the 70 back in Salt Lake City before it can even go back to the stake bishop to allow you 
Okay, so first off, Mormons do less abortions than so-called Christians and even Catholics. Catholics do a lot less than the others, and more. And by the way, Muslims do none. If you do an abortion in a Muslim country, they chop your hands off before Friday morning prayers, and your head comes off right after. You die. Chop, chop. Really, chop, chop, you're gone. <laughs> And you, by the way, they, they, they don't bury you, they burn you to ashes and they throw your ashes in the, in the junk heap. I, abortion is murder, and, and, and the, the, the yeah. wording that people use is a fetus. Well, it's hard to get fetus a fetus is a, Latin for small, a, little a one, little human being. A fetus is a baby. A fetus means Latin, is Latin. Don't they understand Latin? Latin means fetus, means small or little person. And when they say, oh, it's just a glob of tissues, they said, I beg your uh, error there. The fact is, when all abortions are done, the, the baby is playing with its toes, sucking its thumb, moving around, has a developed nervous system, can feel pain sees light, hears things, and the mother's sounds all around it at, 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 at as early as when six weeks. When you meet your maker and you try your clever comments about, oh, well, you know, it, it, it's just a mass of tissues, guess what? Well, not only that, we got to understand what, if we don't draw the line in the sand over the idea that at the moment of conception, we'll have chimeric monstrosities, super soldiers. They're now, here's what they're doing now. And the people oh, don't understand. We're headed in that direction because the... the, the well, transhumanism. I want to bring on Tom Horn because I'm going to have a lot of talk about transhumanism. In 1977, I wanted to do research at UCLA at the VA hospital in UCLA on multiple sclerosis. And I was to be the senior resident for Dr. Wallace Tortolot at the UCLA VA hospital hospital and the main labs there that were doing the world repository for MS brain tissue. The four other projects I was supposed to be involved with they then interviewed and told me were all classified projects for DARPA and these were really nasty. They were wet wiring brains of prisoners. They were actually commuting and reducing sentences. They are doing transcranial pulse electromagnetic field effect, uh, onboard control of jet aircraft ordnance and flying commands by thought, and visual on command sequences by sh shining the icons on the canopy of the, of the, uh, of the jet aircraft. They had a mock-up right in Dr. Tortola's office. They had a custom CT scan implanter for putting microwires in the deep nuclei, the range control nucleus of the but, brain, but and they had a kill chip. problems with that. They had a rage control nucleus chip. Listen to this. They even ex were experimenting with the people at, at Tavistock, England, because they did conjoint work with Bethesda, Tavistock, and the manager yeah, of the Yeah, Tavistock is a cesspool of evil. Right. And what they're doing back. is they actually implanted chips in the rage control nucleus and can throw the kill switch to kill. So you throw that switch and you start simulating that switch, and anything that is in their pathway, they'll kill. They had that, and they were experimenting with that as long ago as, believe it or not, the Vietnam War back in the 60s. So, well, uh, I just did, did a link of the World Health Organization. You know, a lot of people think, oh, the World Health Organization, they're one of the good guys there on the oh, side. Oh, yeah, yeah. They're the, they're the and, worst of the worst. Um, they uh, failed in their effort to defend the use of mercury in vaccines before the uh, United Nations. Um, and also, by the way, the World Health Organization contracted, and I got the documents, March 16, 1997, in Zurich to vaccinate in Philippines and South, Af uh, South Africa, vaccinate women so they couldn't maintain a pregnancy by causing antibodies against human, chorionic, and anatropin in the placenta. Evil, evil, evil to the core, right out of hell, satanic. Yeah. And if and you think Dr. Deagle's just inventing this or it's a, con a conspiracy theory, you know what, I got a piece of my mind, and you want to you wanna argue with me? Call me up, email. Your day will never be the same after I'm finished with you. <laughs> Because I'm in a state of rage over the fact of the ignorance of the population. I'm more enraged by the ignorance of the people than I well, am over Obama or anything else. facilitates what the evil... Uh, well, if, if, just, if people even would just ask good questions, even if they were skeptical. Skeptical's good. I don't care if people believe. Just be skeptical. Don't spit. Don't say or use ad hominem attacks. Check it out yourself and find out the truth.